little bit about what's going on with John Kay and Steppenwolf in 2001. It's our 34th anniversary this month in July. Um, obviously, we wouldn't be here if we hadn't been supported by a lot of loyal fans and supporters. We're very lucky in that regard. Many other bands don't even have a lifespan of five years, let alone 34. Um, of course, we've tried to always deliver the goods to our fr fans so they're not disappointed in what we do. Uh, so this is yet another uh, summer tour. You know, we have cut back somewhat in terms of the number of dates that we play annually because everybody in the band and even our crew and so forth by now have uh, families and what have you and they were trying to balance road life with home life. But um, actually we turned down quite a number of dates that we don't play every year. So we kind of cherry pick the ones that make sense for a variety of reasons. So we consider ourselves very fortunate. We have um, a couple of video projects in the works. I have a solo album that just came out a couple of months ago called Heretics and Privateers. Any of our fans, any of our friends that want to stay in touch with what the wolf is up to since we don't get to see everybody regularly uh, can simply go to stevenwolf.com which is updated several times a week and which at this point I think is over 370 pages deep so there's a lot of archival stuff as well as brand new information and um, what else can I tell you that would be new exciting and different um, not anything that comes to mind. Does, We're, does it never cease to amaze you in the parking lot? Someone said, who's with the uh, boss? And I said, yeah, oh, Stephen Wolf. And they're like, I can't believe I love those guys. And they were asking me directions on how to get to the show. The longevity, could you comment on that? Well, the longevity, the longevity is very definitely uh, something that uh, has surprised all of us. As I said before, this is an industry that that makes no guarantees to anyone and uh, quite regularly eats its young. I mean, it's not unusual for a baby band to have perhaps one shot at getting on the media radar screen and then disappear almost overnight. And again, I think uh, the primary reason for our longevity is not because we were so brilliant or we had some master game plan for the long term. It's because through the ups and downs and the variety of people have come through the band, uh, really it's been the support of the fans. Obviously, if you no longer sell concert tickets or you cannot sell any records, nobody's interested in doing business with you. And we would all be doing something else at this point. Uh, we've had our ups and downs. During the downs, it was really particularly important that our fans uh, kind of rallied around the band, so to speak, because when we sensed that they were still uh, interested in what we had to offer, that was what gave us the determination to continue. Now, the last down we had worth mentioning was really late 70s. The last 20 years or so, uh, the early 80s were a rebuilding proce uh, um, process to a certain extent. But the last 20 years have been some of the most uh, satisfying and rewarding uh, years of our long career. Uh, to some extent, uh, the periods that were kind of difficult for us helped us in the long term because we had to learn how to mind the store ourselves. We had to learn how to work within this industry and uh, take care of our needs with respect to having our own recording studio and publishing companies and various other things that we've learned how to do. As a result, we're far more self-sufficient, less dependent on outside forces for our survival, and the connection between the band and its fan base is far more direct than it's ever been. We have the Wolf Pack, which is our fan club, which is literally global in its scope. Uh, we have fans in various parts of the world. Uh, we have an annual thing called Wolf Fest in Nashville, Tennessee, which is the home base for the band, which brings together members of the Wolf Pack from literally all over the world. These people are sort of individually like pebbles cast into the pond where the ripples reach a variety of uh, other places. They are the ones, each one of whom is sort of a goodwill ambassador on our behalf and um, who caravan and come to see various concerts of ours. So we're all kind of interconnected in a far more direct way than we ever were in the past. And as a result, we kind of know how to 
be at the helm of our own little steamboat here and to kind of guide what we do without any interference from outside sources. In a way, you could say that what we're doing is kind of the Grateful Dead model in minuscule form because those guys a long time ago learned how to connect with their audience directly more so perhaps than almost any other act I can think of. So yes, I'm surprised 34 years later, but by the same token, each year you learn a little more about how to take care of what you do. And you know, once in a while you come up for air, you take a look around and you say, we're doing pretty good. And again, you have to kind of uh, acknowledge the fact that your fan base is really the very core of the reason why you're thriving after all these years. Well, I spoke with um, Ian Gillen from Deep Purple uh, yeah. last month, and we asked him about the same question and, uh, about why do you still do it? And he said, well, believe it or not, I get the butterflies every night, and if I didn't have those, then I wouldn't do it anymore. Right. Why do you, 34 years later, still want to get up there and perform? Well, it's very simple, really, from, from my perspective. It's very simple. It is still something that has a certain uh, on, the, on, on those nights where everything is working, the equipment is all working, and the crowd is plugged into what you do, it's still something that um, kind of gives you chicken skin and gives you a thrill, something that is very difficult to match with other experiences that, that I've had. I can't really think of anything as a, uh, a different uh, form of uh, profession that would give me that particular, um, you know, that charge that you get. The other thing, of course, is at this point, we're in a comfort zone in terms of how we tour and operate. The uh, people that are in the band and in the crew are all far more mature and uh, actually enjoy each other's company. The egos are under control. There's a com camaraderie that that is, um, uh, you know, th that is sort of the glue that makes the whole thing work when you're out there on the road, whether it's in your tour bus or, or, or when we're in other parts of the world where we have to fly. Being with people who you like, whose company you enjoy, is a big factor in the equation as to how much fun it is to be out there on the road. I mean, when you look at it very sort of pragmatically and you, you kind of enumerate the things that are at work here and you say to yourself, I get to say what I want to say that's in my heart or on my, you know, on my mind in the songs that we write, which we get to play amongst a bunch of friends who in turn travel in various parts of the world to play this music for that other set of friends, namely the ones who've stuck it out with us for a long while and who continue to come um, you know, to the concerts, who continue to buy the records, and who see to it that we make a very, very nice living at something that we enjoy. That combination of facts and, uh, and is, is difficult to beat with anything else that I've ever contemplated doing. So the final question, is it safe to say Steppenwolf, John Kane Steppenwolf, forever? No, I, I, definitely, uh, I definitely see you know, in a couple more years or so, us significantly cutting back to the point where we may no longer do any annual tours, per se. We may do special events uh, where we, um, you know, do a very limited number of, of performance on an annual basis. Uh, we have a lot of in-house uh, facilities and projects that have to do with, uh, for instance, our guitar player Danny Johnson has another solo album coming out. My solo album that's out right now may be followed by something uh, along those lines in a year or so. Uh, that doesn't mean we're all going to run in different areas uh, touring, but it does mean we're going to stay active and creative. We got video projects too, which uh, are in the final stages of completion. Uh, the website, which is very, very active and which is sort of a cyber clubhouse and uh, central dissemination uh, of, of, of wolf information uh, uh, place, that definitely will continue. So we may not see our friends out there on the road quite as often as we are accustomed to in a few years, but certainly we intend to remain in touch and uh, see to it that anyone who is interested in what this band has been all about and its history and 
uh, that those pieces of information, uh, the recordings, the books, the, the various things that make up the, the, the composite picture of the history of this band, that these things are available uh, on an ongoing basis. Because there are always young people coming through the ranks who come across one of our tunes, like what they hear, and then are drawn towards the band to find out what more there is.